who did betray you, a prayer of St. G. We have come from far to hear, and by what guided? All knowledge, all faith, the tongues of angels, the gifts of prophecy, all these. And if our hands were ceaselessly busy with removing mountains of evil from the world, nevertheless, if your faiths remain strange to us, and if we have no experience of your divine embrace and benedictions, it will profit us nothing. Nor would it profit you, deserving of infinite glory. Your desire for us, no less than our need of you, can be satisfied in no other way than in a thorough spiritual penetration and possession. All depends upon you. When we ignore you, you seem only to shrug in love, leaving us in our own form of withdrawn peace. Astounding. A strange God. As usual, we are hardly present to you, gazing sadly, anxiously away. We don't have the slightest thing to do with your appearance or disappearance to us. Why are we trying to solve the mystery about God? We imagine that if we please you, we will live. We were paid for our time, sun and rain, water, children, labor, happinesses. You owe us nothing. We have submitted to all things tossed about us, but not to you. See us in history, Adam which did betray you, the holy Satan who fell so far, the Levitical world, a world of shadows, Israel which did betray your covenant, Hosea in a marriage of Berith, which did betray you. The golden calf in preference to the law. The rock struck twice by Moses. And the people considered your law a strange thing. Nebuchadnezzar, given 15 more years of life, which did betray you. A progressive apostasy over time, gathering force toward the end. Shall such a one as you be intimate with us, and we not with you. When we try to pierce the veil of mystery enveloping the future world, we fear there might be no remembrance in us of you, no knowledge of your goodness, no praise of your glory. If we are empty now, shall we be empty then? Let us have you and be owned by you. Imperatively, we must exist in your image. Had there been no sin in the world, what shall we have been together? From our low stature, your moral excellence blazes forth. Isaiah proclaims your absolute greatness. Each time follows as an echo the confession of the absolute littleness of every creature. Our life is nourished only in friendship with you. See Calvin, to whom is referred predestination. How else shall any of us have come to you? God wrought wonders in history for the salvation of your people. And we do say that Jesus accepted the cross out of love for us, but truly it was for his love of God. The cross separates two worlds. We, the blessed, are the vertical. The root of death is in having been sent forth from God, as in the garden as Jesus, forsaken at the cross. We too shall die, confident we shall be raised up again. And in no moment do we lose your conscious friendship. A new and holy Israel is made ready for God. Everything in the world is ruled by thought and possesses ideal significance. Blind, purposeless being without any thought at all does not exist. And as for many years, the thoughts of each of us does betray you. We must learn, as was said of Judas, the Son of Man goes as it was determined, but woe be to that man by whom he is betrayed. There are limitations to every scientific discussion of the nature and attributes of God, but mystery is the life element of the supernatural. Yet we have known the one who has existed from the beginning, or rather, you have known us. Judas, too, was known, by which you were betrayed. 
The God of our fathers is our refuge. Underneath your are your everlasting arms to keep us safe. We know our betrayals, which did betray you, as do also you know our betrayals. But we are forgiven, we are loved. These things are left behind, never mentioned. We fall into your arms, Eternal Father, strong to save. Amen. <laughs>